Hey guys, so welcome back. So we got another little clock radio here. I thought I would do uh, one or two fairly quick <clears throat> radios because I've got a couple of other projects that are going to be multi-part. I, I can just tell. <laughs> and uh, so I thought I'd do this little guy. I picked him up for two bucks, I think, at an auction not too long ago. It's a clock radio. Uh, it does not have radium hands, so I'm going to work on this one. Um, it says it's solid state. And I've seen it on... <clears throat> I think is it on uh, what is it radio museum that says it thinks it's from 1958 but there's no Conrad markings on here so I think it's going to be after 64 you know late 63 after 64 uh, we'll see uh, we open this up we'll see I think the model number is a B258 P Bravo 258 Papa uh, but maybe there's a tag inside or something we'll see what we can see okay there's something rattling around in here <laughs> so as you can see, the case needs to be cleaned. There is obviously some bad scratches in it, so all across here, so it's the same old story. Um, speakers in the bottom. And I'll tell you, it's more yellow than it looks on the screen. Turn around the back. Okay, it's got a alarm set push in, time set to pull out. And uh, runs at an eighth of an amp. Okay, let's get this thing open and see what it looks like inside, huh? Alright, let's see what we got inside this beauty. Nothing special about this, no antenna on the back. Oh boy, take a look at all this. It's not a telecron movement. Oh. So these, oh hey look, we've got some information here. So these here go there to hold the clock movement in place. So we'll have to see what we can do about that, if we need to do anything about it. So model blank. We got a converter, an IF, a driver, and an output. Transformers, we got an oscillator, a first IF, second IF, and an output. says 820 and sorry no is that a B or an 8 here I can't quite read that what are those giving me a model number I don't know. well what do you want to do I feel like putting the juice to it let's just say here Caution, continued protection against fire hazard. Replace only with same type protective resistor. So there's a protective resistor in there. Refer replacement to qualified service, field service personnel. Well, I guess he's busy. All right, let's, uh, I'm gonna put the juice to it and see what it does. Okay, so we're ready to go for power up. Uh, I don't recommend you do this at home, you know, don't take an old radio like this and just plug it in because the capacitors are uh, uh, pretty much in bad shape and you just don't want to damage components until you have a chance to check to see if there's a short or anything else like that going on. Uh, what I've got is I've got an isolation transformer back here which will prevent me from getting essentially shocked by just sitting here with my feet on the floor. If I touch two things I can get shocked but not one. I've got uh, a variac very act back here that I can use to bring the voltage up slowly. I've got a, a current meter here, an ammeter, to see if the uh, current runs away from us. Now we know from the description on the back panel that it wants to be about 0.12 amps. This is a one amp full scale. I could switch to different ammeter. It'll be down here. I'm just going to be using this to make sure it doesn't come up because that would tell me I've got something pulling more power than it should. And I can shut it down before we bring the voltage up much higher. All right, so let's get started. We got it on. We might see the second hand start. Uh, let's go. 10 volts, 20 volts, 30 volts, 40 volts, nothing on the ammeter yet, 50 volts, 60 volts, still nothing, 70 volts, nothing 80 volts 
nothing. Let me just pause for a minute. Check my wires, make sure I've got uh, things connected properly. Here, here, yeah, that looks good. That's connected. Yeah. It's going up 90 volts. Nothing. Something's wrong. It should have been doing something by now. 110 volts. Oh, we got the second hand moving. Not much showing on the ammeter, but the second hand's moving, so we're never getting power into the unit. Okay, since I've got enough of that to run, let me see if we're getting anything on the radio. Hey, there you go. Okay, so the audio system is working, at least in terms of the main elements of it. Let's see if we can get something here. Turn it up. Okay. All right, bring it on up. 120 volts. Very little on the current. I'm getting some noise out of it. Nothing here. Let's see what it's got for an antenna. Not much. I don't even see it. All right. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get this thing out of the case and see if we can find out what's wrong with it, huh? We can clean that. Out where the screw go? There it is. Here's the other screw. Okay. Okay, what do we got here, kids? Let's see. So the power comes in and goes to these two points on the clock, and then one lead just jumps over there, and then this one comes out. So these two blue leads are the hot leads coming in. Oh, here's our antenna. Okay. Not much to this, huh? Look at this little IF transformer. That little guy. Interesting. It says first IF transformer and second IF transformer. Okay, I guess the other one is, uh, I don't know, right? That's the oscillator. IF transformer, is it that? Could be. This output uh, resistor, oh, sorry, transistor. Sanyo 2S, I guess it's no 240. Okay, so as far as capacitors go, we've got this big filter cap here, and then we've got a capacitor down here on the volume control. That'll be one of the ones I'll check. I'll check this one too. And what else do we have? Let me give them a quick check. Let's see what we got. Let's see. That one is open. Yeah, it's been puking some stuff out of it. So that is here and here. That's completely open. All right. They just chirp at me. No. Okay, what about this one? Here. To here. That one's completely open. Take a quick look at the filter caps. I don't think that's why it's quiet. You never know. Let's see. Hang this ground. Okay, that one's okay. That one's okay. Okay, well, I'm going to work on the assumption that the filter cap's okay for now. I'm going to go and see about jumper in these two guys here. Let me get a couple of jumpers for that, and I'll be right back. Okay, these two uh, capacitors that I'm going to do something about. This one's a 10, so I've got another uh, 
10 here. This one's a 2.2 amount of those, so I've got a 4. Is it 4.7, I guess? We'll do them one at a time. We'll see which ones make a difference. Uh, this one's by the volume control. This one actually measured, I got in there to look closer, it measured about 30 ohms, whereas this one's completely open. So I'm going to do this one first, see if we get any reaction at all, and then uh, we'll look at this one. Okay, let me put the power back to it. Okay, let's put some current to it and see how it does. Turn the voltage down, bring it up. 60 volts. 80 volts, I hear hissing. Maybe the clock moving. It's 120 volts. Can get scratching out of the speaker. Okay, let's see if we get any noise coming through here. Let's see. Negative lead is here. Positive lead. Okay, that helps. A little bit. Let's see if we get anything out of this one here. This one is make sure you get polarity right. Hang on. Okay. It's my thumb on the lead. Let me just get these two capacitors in. We'll see how they do. Okay, so we got those two capacitors changed. This one here and this one here. Uh, I'm not sure that that's what the problem is, but they were definitely open, so they needed to be changed. So we'll uh, see how it does now. All right, put the power to it. Uh, yep, okay. Turn it down, power on. 120 volts there. I'm getting scratching again. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this volume pot to make sure it's not got a problem. And then I think what I'm going to do is you start using the signal tracer. So let me get the, this cleaned up and then we'll see what we do. Okay, so I put the cleaner in here and I'll clean this up quite a bit. Uh, let's put the power to it and see if it makes any difference that we notice. 120 volts. Bad news about this is you get rid of the scratchiness. You don't hear the speaker. Okay, here's something happening there. But it's not as noisy, so that's good. Get that, up, get that problem out of the way. Okay, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to start using the signal tracer and we're going to go to the volume control and see if we've got anything there. I'm going to use this little guy right here. So bear with me a minute. I'll get this hooked up. Okay, since I'm going to be at the volume control, I'm going to use the audio frequency selector. Turn on the volume. This thing, does this thing still have a battery in it? Yeah, okay. All right, we got juice going to this. One end is the high, oops. One is the high end and the other end is the low end. Let's see here, what do we got? I think we got a ground here because that's where the capacitor went. Let's just try one of these other legs. Okay, I'm not hearing anything. So we have a problem back in the uh, RF section. Okay, so we apparently have a problem in the uh, RF section, I think. So we're going to go and start poking around back by the uh, IF transformer. Let me get myself cleared up here so I can work a little cleaner. Hold on.
Okay, so what I've done here is I just went ahead and took the board and disconnected the cables that go to the power lead uh, and the speaker because I was actually tugging on the speaker leads a lot and it was pulling directly on the uh, audio output transformer. And I was afraid that I was going to get damaged. Uh, this little chart that's up here, I've taken a picture of it. I'm going to pop it up here on the screen here in a little bit so you can see a little bit about what's what as we're looking at this. Uh, power's off. So here is the top side. A little bit easier to see now. Let's uh, talk about what we're looking at. Okay, so this is where you maybe see a little better. All right, so this is obviously the antenna. This is the antenna part of the tuning condenser. This is the oscillator part. Here is the uh, oscillator coil. This is the first IF. That right there, a glob top, that is the IF transistor right there. The converter is this one right here. I'm getting that all off of this chart and I'm going to show you. So that's the that's the converter. So there's the oscillator goes converter. Here's the first IF. That little guy right there is the IF transistor. Then this is the second IF transformer here. Then you flip it over. There's the detector diode. Okay, the bottom. And you come back on the top. That is the driver transistor right here. Okay output transformer and then this is the output transistor right here. I learned all this by looking at that chart that's up here. Okay. So what I want to do is we know that we're getting some noise out of the output. Um, I think what I'm going to try to do is see if we're getting anything out of the uh, detector and then we'll just work our way back and see what we get. So let me get that started and uh, we'll get started. Okay, let's get some power on this. Okay. Get any sound? I can hear a little bit of noise there. Let's see. There we go. There's cheap and cheerful for a test. Okay, audio transformer works, output uh, transistor works, speaker works. Good, okay. All right, so let's look at what's going on with this in here. So what I'd like to do is I want to bring in a um, 455 kilocycle off of my signal generator and we'll see how that, see if that uh, goes through the detector diode. Let me get that set up here. Part of my arm. Okay. Signal generator is set at 455. I'm going to put on the modulation. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to use a capacitor here. on so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, here's the detector diode. Okay. Okay, so we now know the detector works and from the detector on everything works. We need to see the volume control. How's that work? Okay, so from the detector diode on, the audio system works just fine. All right, let's work our way back from the uh, detector diode. Let's go back to um, go go to the second IF can, see so what we can get there. So let's see. Second IF is here. Uh, let's see. So we got a little bit there. So the second IF can seems to be working okay. Okay, let's see. Let's go to the um, transistor. 
Okay, the IF transistor is here. Let's see. Okay, good. So, there's one of the leads. There's nothing there. Okay, this goes to the, the first IF. Okay. Let me bring you in. That doesn't look right. Okay, I believe... Let me get a pointer here. The IF transistor is here. Here, here, and here. Let me see about voltages here. Hang on. Bring you back a bit. This is the ground on the uh, big filter caps. So I go here. See that? 23 volts DC. This this is going to say is the base because this is coming off the first IF. 1.4. Okay, so if that's one point, if that's the base, and that's the collector, then this is the emitter here. Uh, the emitter is at ground. Unless it's tied directly to ground, there's no current going through any kind of cathode resistor. So, hmm. Let's back up here a minute. So when I go in here with the uh, signal, so that's the collector. And that makes sense. That's going to the second IF transformer. That's the base. I had voltage at the base, but I'm getting nothing out of there. And it ought to be amplifying. Hmm. Well, let's see. What else can I try? Let me see if the signal's getting there, getting to that. Let me, uh, I'm going to, let's see if there's a way I can do this. Bear with me a minute. Take the signal. Problem is I don't have any place to hook on. You get, keep away from the, that's the high voltage. Um, let's see, the chart says this is the antenna. I'm just going to hook up the 455 modulated signal directly to the antenna. And let's see if we pick up anything. How am I going to hear it? Get my signal tracer. Okay, put the signal tracer on the, I said setting a while ago, but this is RF. That's the AF setting, that's the RF setting, if you will. Okay. Let's see if there's anything getting to the base. Well, there you go. That's coming from here, not from the radio. Okay, so let me zoom in as so you can see this. Okay, so this is the IF transistor right here. This lead right here comes from, see these leads right here? This is the first IF can. And there's a lead comes right off of here the first IF to the base. That's the base. That's the because we know that's the collector. This had zero volts, so that's the emitter. This had higher voltage, that's the collector. This comes off the IF cans, that's the base. When we were listening, uh, let's see, wait a minute. When I used the signal uh, generator, I touched it to the collector and I could hear it come through the radio speaker. When I touched it here, 
I got nothing. I had voltage here. I had voltage in the collector, but I didn't have anything here, which indicates if there's a cathode resistor, it wasn't drawing any any current. So what I've done is instead of hooking the signal generator up to here, what I did is I hooked it up to the antenna, which is up here actually, and it would then see does it make it all the way here through the um, through the con um, the con what am I trying to say through the oscillator and the mixer the converter thank you uh, get through the converter which is I think right here uh, so I was able to get through there get through the first IF and then come to here and that's what we just checked and I had this on RF so this is going through a little diode and that shows that the signal is coming through the the antenna and getting through to here. That means that this transistor, the IF transistor, is suspect. I'm going to take it out of circuit and check it. I'll bring you back when I get all that done. Okay, so you can see where the holes were, where the transistor was. I put a dot of silver paint by one of the holes there and put a, a corresponding mark next to that lead on the transistor. So here we go. So this is the IF transistor. It's a 930. Will that be a 2S930? Right. So let's uh Let's put this thing on the little transistor tester and see what it says. Get that wired up. Okay, there. You see it okay? Yeah, okay, let's see what we get. Diode. It's no good. We got an open something. <laughs> Let me just swap them around so we get a different result. Let's swap two. So it said there was a diode between green and yellow, right? Diode between green, yellow, red. Okay, so let me swap out for... Let me just swap these two. See if it shows the, rever the diode pointing to one. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we got a dead. Uh, we got a dead lead. One of the diodes, or whatever you want to call it, one of the junctions in the uh, transistors out. Okay. So uh, there's your problem. <laughs> there's your problem lady. <laughs> IF transistor is bad. Okay, we got a, a 930. I'll, I'll see if I got something I can put in for this. Uh, I don't know how critical it is. I don't know what gain it was supposed to have. So we just play around with something I suppose. It's, it's uh, higher frequency than audio, but it's not like ultra high frequency. Let's see what I can find. Okay, so I found the data sheet on that uh, IF transistor. I think it's a 2SC930, and it seems to be pretty much what we got here. I happen to have a, a 2N4401 here. I'm going to just try this. It's just a general purpose transistor. It's an NPN silicon. So I'm going to put this in, and we'll just see how it goes. I'm just going to tack it on the bottom so I don't have to try to feed it down through there. I'm going to use the uh, component tester to verify the pinouts and then we'll uh, put this thing in and we'll see how it goes. I'll bring it back after I get it soldered in. Okay, so we got this thing wired up. Alright, so one is the emitter, base is in the middle, and the collector is red in this case. Okay. Okay, so we got the uh, replacement transistor just kind of tacked in on the bottom side. You can see it there. 
maybe. There you go. All right, let me get my junk out of the way here. Let's see, we'll go to power up and see if this thing works. Just keep our fingers crossed, maybe we'll get lucky. All right, I'm gonna voltage down some. All right, let's go. Hey! What do you know? There's 100 volts. Well, <laughs> so that was trying to work. I short something out. Let's see if we get anything through the IF. Let's see. Let's see if we get anything. Okay. Sounds like a higher frequency than we would have expected. Let's just see. If I put this onto the base, does it get... Let's see, let's try the collector first. We got a capacitor problem, maybe? our oscillator is not running. Okay. So that is what we were not getting a while ago. I'm pressing that onto the uh, collector. I'm sorry, the base coming out of the first IF. So that's definitely coming through real fine. Okay. Where would be the input? So there's our input to the first IF. So where is this is the collector for the converter. All right. I don't know what that means. <laughs> All right. If I go to the, let me turn my modulation down, my frequency volume down. Looks like it wants to work. I wonder if my oscillator is not running. Kind of seems like the likely thing, doesn't it? Yeah, it makes me wonder if the converter's not working right. Well, I was having it go through earlier. All right, I need to get, let me get this other stuff cleaned out of the way so I can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'll be right back. Okay, so perhaps I was overdriving it some, so I put a little coil on the end of my, on my uh, generator here. And uh, just bring this near the leads here. Let's see if I can hear anything. Let's 
You can hear that there. You can hear it on the other side of the IF transformer even louder. And then you come over to the converter. Uh, that's the converter collector right there. Get pretty well there. But it's not strong enough to come directly from the antenna. So, uh, I guess the next thing to look at is maybe the uh, converter transistor. Let me give that some thought. It's getting kind of late tonight. I'm going to look at it later. But uh, I want to maybe look at maybe doing the uh, converter next. So I just had something interesting happen when I turned the power off. So let me go back and put it back down low. When I go up to 120 volts or so, I don't know if you can see it over here, but you can't. There you go. I'm not getting anything, but let me drop the voltage. And we have a station. So, obviously I've got a voltage problem, because now the radio is working. So, either I've got some resistors out, I've got some bad bias voltages. Uh, what I was just thinking about is, I have taken it out of the circuit with the uh, clock motor. I'll, maybe I'll put the clock motor back in the circuit. I don't think it's going to drop the volt, you know, the current that much, but uh, let me just put it back in and we'll just see how that does. Okay, we get that wired back in. Let's just see what we get now. Okay, still losing it. At 100 volts, it drops out. Okay, my memory card filled up. I may had to go in and empty my memory card. So anyway, we're back with this. Um, what I'm going to do is do some voltage checks now. I did some voltage checks earlier on this, and I'm just wondering what we have now, since apparently we have a voltage issue. So let me bring the voltage back up on this. So this says about 90 volts. There's 90 volts. And it works pretty well. But I bring it up. So right there apparently on the bias. Anyway, so there's 100, 120 volts. Let's get the, uh, let's do a couple of voltage measurements. Let's go back to that uh, IF transistor we changed and me, you know we measured the uh, the collector and the base and the emitter. Let's see if we can get set up here. Hang on a second. Let me find a patch cord. And we know that's the negative from the filter capacitors there. Okay. All right, let's see what we we get here. This is the the collector. Okay. Okay, on the base we're getting 1.3 on the emitter. I'm at 0.7. What's going on here? The collector. Okay. 
supported the uh, deduction of income taxes years ago because when you pay your taxes before you get your money, you don't even realize how much they, they pay. But I bet you've got your bank. So when I put the voltage meter on here, on the collector, it starts to work. Well, I'll be. All I'm doing is putting an empty lead on there, and it's starting to work. It's capacitance. Okay, you know when I was hitting that high frequency, I was getting like oscillations. Where's my Where's my sheet? I've got that. What have I done with it? The uh, new transistor I put on there probably had a higher frequency capability than the old one that was there. I don't know what I've done with it. Let's see if I can find it. But uh, it probably has a higher frequency capability on it. So this thing must be going into oscillation. Uh, but the um, transistor that was in here originally probably didn't have that kind of frequency response. So it was not being able to get in the way. But this new one may have a higher frequency capability and it's allowing that oscillation to occur and it's causing the thing to shut down. Maybe even feed, feeding back through the ABC back into the front end. Um, it might be I just need some capacitance on here to kill that or to filter off the, you know, bypass off the higher frequencies. So let's see, that's got probably pretty low capacitance on it. Let me see what I've got. Hold on. Here's my uh, stash of some of my mica capacitors that I use for, you know, things like IF can rebuilding. Hang on. Come on. So I've got some uh, 50 picofarad silver mica caps here. Let's just see if I can bypass off high frequency. And do what that lead was doing. Let's see here. Let me bring you in close. Okay, let me get my glasses. So this is our transistor right here. And there's the collector. And let's see. Put one into ground. We'll go to the collector. <laughs> the Hartford. We don't just talk about specialization. We live it. Learn how the Hartford can help you. Well, there you go. Uh, let me just tack this uh, 50, puff, pico, uh, 50 picofarad uh, silver mica cap in here, and we'll see if it isn't, doesn't make it where this higher speed uh, transistor will work in the IF position. Let me get this, let me get this tacked in somewhere and I'll bring it back. Okay, so I got the uh, little 50 picofarad capacitor installed. It goes from, so here's the, here's the transistor stuck on the bottom, right? And it comes up to the collector here. It's attached to the collector. And I found another ground point over here. It's hard to see in this. Ba so basically, this is, the, uh, this is the filter capacitor leads. This is the negative. And if you route that around, you follow it all the way around. There's the, there's the uh, detector diode, by the way. And bring it all around over here. And it comes over to this mess right here. And there was a spike sticking up here. That I was able to solder onto, so I got it connected from the, the uh, collector of the IF trans, uh, transistor over to ground, and that seemed to have done the trick a minute ago. So let's turn this thing on, and we'll see what we get. Let me make sure I get my leads right, and then I'll hit the power to it. Let's see. Yeah, I used to use this to ohm out to make sure that was part of ground. Okay. 
Well, let's see what we get. All right, power's down. You can see the voltage here. Okay, power coming up. Hundred and twenty volts. Okay, so why did that capacitor fix it? I don't know. <laughs> I put the lead to it, and the capacitance from the lead was enough to cause the oscillation to stop. And so I then just added a bypass capacitor and a very low capacitance to ground uh, to bypass off that oscillation. It may have been feeding back, uh, maybe through the ABC, I don't know. Uh, I guess it would have been cut off by the second IF, and maybe that's what was cutting it all off, and that's where it stopped. But anyway, once we got that oscillation to quit, uh, it seems to be working well now. So I think what I'm going to do is, let me check the current to make sure that we don't have a, a current draw problem. Hang on. So we're supposed to expect a maximum of 120 milliamps. So it'll be on milliamps uh, AC coming from the wall, yep. And I'm going to disconnect this momentarily. Okay, we're at 70 milliamps. That's great. We're well below the, uh, the maximum. Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, look at reinstalling it, but first, before I do that, I may just touch the, uh, touch the uh, uh, alignment, just to make sure it's okay, and uh, I'll bring you back if I see something interesting about that. Okay, so we're going to do the alignment. I'm supposed to start with this about six, being right about 600, and we go in with a, a coil. We get the coil hooked up here. So the idea is just kind of have a loose coupling here. And set part of my arm. I need to set my uh, frequency generator at 455 if it's not still there. Tweak it just a little bit. Okay, 455. Modulation on. Turn it down low. And I'll turn the volume up all the way. Adjust my levels. You'll be able to hear it through the background noise, but. Just the first and second IF. I believe this first one has an upper and lower slug. We'll try it and find out. I think that's why it's got a tall can. This one has a single slug, but I think this one has an upper and a lower. So we'll just see what we get. Let me turn this down. I know that must be tough on your earphones. Let me see what we get. Let's see. To the first slug, let's go down. Is there a lower slug? Maybe. Let's see. Yeah, there's a lower slug. It's pretty good. Let's go to the upper slug. Let's 
kind of sticky. I think that sounds pretty good right there. All right, let me go to the uh, second IF. Usually I start at the second IF and work my way back. I didn't do it this time. Probably since I put that capacitor in there, I needed to have this adjusted. There you go. Let me readjust my levels. That is really a lot louder. There, you adjust this. Check to see if this upper slug is a different size. No. Okay, I think that's got the IF. So now what we do is we turn to 1600. 1600. And then we adjust the... Uh, yeah, we adjust the oscillator here to get that tuned in. Oh, i got to change my frequency, don't I? I need to change this to 1600. So I'll change my frequency to 1.6 megahertz. Okay, 1.6 megahertz. Am I close? Almost, not quite. Okay, so if I want to go be more that way, to which way do I have to turn it? And I'm looking at the one that's furthest from the dial. So it's this one. Okay, I want to go clockwise. Turn 1600. Now we want to go to 600. Let's so we'll go to 600 kilohertz. And we're going to do the patter. Or rather, the local oscillator, I should say. Come on. Okay, 600. Oscillator on. Turn this back to 600. can't tell but it looks like I'm right on for what it takes to turn this to get that to be straight I think I'm close enough I'm not gonna mess with it uh, okay so now I go to 1400 to set the uh, antenna so we we'll go back to 1400 
go to 1.4 kilohertz. Point four kilohertz modulation coming on. I'll tune this to the tone. I'll turn this really low. I, I actually prefer to do this to a weak station. Let me set this further away. Oops. Bear with me. Stand by. Okay. Right about there. Okay, let's see how this thing performs. If it wants to. Back you up a little bit. Let's see if it still wants to play. You know, this has really a sensitive tuning. You go to where my strong stations are, they're on the other side of the band. Those customers sleep better at night knowing your new roof has been installed correctly. When you know you need a new roof, don't put it off. Call me now, Deb Dehada at Tejas Roofing. You're going to have to start paying me. <laughs> hey, there's KILT. I don't normally pick it up in here. Maybe I'm just getting better at doing alignments. Who knows? Not bad for a little four transistor radio. And the most common categories for those spending cuts over the last six months have been clothing and apparel. So that bracket hasn't been going. Sorry, Jimmy, I'd like to listen to you, but I get picked up for copyright. Yeah, the, the tuning is very sensitive for this kind of knob. You, you can imagine trying to tune in with this little thing. You have to grab it out here to have a hope. Because it's just, it's really sensitive. Maybe if I made it less peaked, you know, it'd be big broadband. And it'd be less picky, but uh, I'd rather have it picky. Okay, I think it's working pretty good. Let me see about the rest of the cabinet and putting it back. Great. Trying to decide whether I want to take the clock out. I'm having difficulty getting this knob to come off. I don't know if it's glued, it might be. It does not want to budge. It won't come out. Looks like the clock is going to stay. We know it works. Okay, I'm going to clean this up some as I can with the clock in there and. I'm going to leave the cover on because I can't get the knob off anyway. And I'll just clean what I can and try not to get any water down inside of here. That'll be a challenge. Um, and I still try to fight to see if I can get this off. Well, the things you do for a hobby 
So I managed to get this off at last. Um, I had pulled on this with everything I could and yes, brought blood <laughs> from coming in here and trying to pull this thing off like this. Uh, I wasn't sure if this bright would come off. I tried kind of tapping it to see if I could feel if there was an indention behind it, like there was a, a screw that was through there. Um, I've been all over this thing trying to figure out how this is in there. It may be that there's a little bit of adhesive in there. I don't know. This is for future people coming along saying, I can't get this knob off. Okay. What I had to do was, is I just laid some paper down and where is it? I laid a, an edge down like this and then went in there and did prying to get this thing to come loose and finally just it never let go until it was off all the way it had a hold of it the whole way through anyway so I've tried cleaning up the cabinet other than that but it just got to where the way this looked just bothered me and I decided I was probably going to crack this to get it off but I just decided you know what let's just go for it and that's what we did so anyway this will come off. You have to pull it straight off. You may have to pry it, but there's not a screw hitting, hidden underneath there, just for future folks coming along. So anyway, that's how you get that off. The uh, This should just pop off easy. Okay, now I can clean behind this. Yeah, it needs it. Now in order to get the clock out, I'm, I would, I'm gonna have to pull the hands off. I think I'm probably not gonna bother because I would need to get them back tuned, uh, timed up. I'd have to line them all up at midnight and maybe bring the alarm hand over so they're all lined up at midnight to make sure that when I put it on here, I don't affect how the alarm goes off. But I think I'm going to be able to get to whatever thing I need without having to pull the clock out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll get the rest of this cleaned up and then we'll see how it looks. You want to hold on to the clock from the back side when you push on this shaft because otherwise it's flexing the plastic too much. Okay, good. Get the rest of this put together. Okay, now on the front knobs, this one here just pulls straight off. The metal clamp band is on the part that comes off the front uh, because the volume control shaft is plastic. So this can be a hot chassis. So this prevents that from uh, being conductive, the little uh, black plastic shaft that comes out of the volume control. However, the tuning condenser has a metal shaft. So this has a clamp on it, and normally this would stay on the front you would pull the radio back and leave this attached to the front and the way it does that is it has this clip on it that holds it against the inside of the cabinet now i went ahead and forced this thing off because i want to be able to use this to get onto the tuning condenser and operate it but normally you would just undo that one screw and pull this thing out and it would leave this behind uh, you still need to take the volume control off so i need to put this back in and install put this in this side and then install this from this side
okay so we're all back in I've resoldered the speaker I've resoldered the power leads I have put in one screw here for the clock the other one wouldn't stay glued it doesn't matter it's in there solid it's, it was not even noticeable with just two in there all right so that's the last look and let's put the back on it we'll see how this thing performs okay we've got the back back on well, it was interesting to make a comment about this here at the back of this thing here uh, this, this is a timing changing times right caution high voltage inside do not open cabinet this unit is fully transistorized and does not contain tubes or user serviceable components refer servicing to qualified personnel and also one side when, once I see the chassis of the receiver is connected to one side of the AC line isn't that interesting you know it's a change in times here right by the way there's nothing here that's metal that comes on the outside that is connected to AC it's all insulated and also the way the knobs are and so forth in the front so there's no way you can touch anything so I just left it as it is. I didn't bother putting a fuse in this or anything like that or redo it or put in a, um, a thermistor. It's set for 120 volts. That's fine. And here's that one-eighth of an amp we were talking about earlier. Okay. So uh, I'm in favor of going out and seeing how this thing would perform away from a house. So I'm going to go take it when I get a chance and we'll see, uh, see how this thing performs. It's only four, four transistors, but uh, it did pretty good in the shop. So we'll see. Okay guys, so we got this done in one episode. That was nice. Uh, this was an interesting little radio. It's uh, transistorized and a little bit different than what I normally work on, so it made for a nice change. Uh, it had some different kinds of ways that you approach this for sure. Uh, I believe this to be a, a Zenith B258W whiskey. There was, a, there was a paper tag in there. If you remember, I said model and it said blank. It was interesting. When I took a photograph of it with my phone, uh, and I'll put it up here, you can see that it uh, there's a there's a W there, and you can kind of f faintly see the 258 as well. Uh, so I believe this is a Bravo 258 whiskey, and uh, what the differences are between the the Papa and the Lima and the whiskey, I don't know. Uh, but it may be whether it has a black face in the front or different color combinations. Uh, I think there's a different model number that might even have a snooze button on top, but I wasn't able to find any information on that. Anyway, so uh, we went through this thing and we found out that it was completely quiet when we plugged this thing in and tried to figure out what was going on with it. We could get some scratching on the volume control, but nothing coming through the radio. So we used a, uh, we used a signal tracer to verify that it seemed like everything in the audio section was working okay, but nothing was getting through from the RF. So then we used a signal generator and saw that we were getting the signal through the detector, and we worked our way back, and we found that we could get as far as the collector on the IF transformer but nothing coming from before that and then likewise we then put the signal generator coming in from the input on the on the uh, on the front end from the antenna and found that it was getting through till we got to the base on the transistor for the IF and then nothing passed it so we took it out put it on the uh, the little uh, transistor tester and it showed that it was bad it had lost one of the junctions. It was just showing as a single diode. No matter how I turned it around, it kept showing a diode between two of the legs. I didn't notice which ones they were. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, we put in a another transistor I just had. It, I didn't try to match it other than it was a silicon um, type transistor as opposed to germanium and put the thing in and we were able to get it to work only if we went in with lower voltages if we were around 80 to 90 volts it seemed to work it was some weird noises uh, but it was functioning uh, so then what I did was I turned the, the voltage up to full voltage 120 volts and it went silent and then I poked around with my voltage meter trying to see well, what was the voltage I was actually trying to get to what the what the bias was on the IF and uh, lo and behold when I put the the probe onto the collector it started to receive so I disconnected that probe from the meter and verified just with the length of wire there just the capacitance in that wire kind of like a gimmick would cause the whatever was going on to stop and for the signal to now come up and go through so I experimented with putting in a, a 50 picofarad uh, silver mica capacitor in there and it was and it fixed the problem so I soldered that in and tested it and that seemed to have done the trick went back and redid the alignment which seemed to have really helped it and uh, the thing 
I think receives pretty good for having only four transistors. Uh, it has a has a converter, it has an IF, it has a a driver for the audio, and it has an audio output uh, transistor. Anyway, clock seems to work. Seems to work just fine. Let's go through and uh, just do a quick band scan on it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but at least we're away from a house and less interference. We just see how it does. So switch it on. Let's see. Are we on? Okay, on. One of the things I'm going to notice is show you is if you look at the tuner on this, you go full scale in less than 180 degrees. And look at how it gets jammed up on the high end here. So this gets very difficult to tune uh, up here in the high end because it doesn't have a lot of resolution up there. In a mental health or substance use crisis, 988 provides 24-7 compassionate support and connection to trained counselors. When you call text That's KILT. you'll be quickly... I'm, I'm grabbing this so I can try to control this because otherwise it just skips around too easy. Call me at Noble Foundation Repair, 832-515-3581. I mean, I think it has very good reception. It has very good sound. Uh, speaker is a nice size. And uh, it doesn't sound tinny at all. It sounds very nice. For a free estimate, or to the website, noblefoundationrepair.com. And if you're looking for great home health or hospice care for you or loved ones, then join me at Phoenix Cannibal for the Avatar Performance. And to learn more, go to endmylot.com. That's endmylot.com. The government needs more money than ever. And that means the IRS is going into aggressive. Told my son. Never mind. <laughs> is still the same guy. Now, does he do things a little differently now uh, with the, you know, evolution of social media, you know, sure. But at the heart of things, he's still in my... Yes. The is not as small as it was when I was 18 or 21 years old. But it's not been a problem for me. issues that you're hearing on both sides. Strike recently. The two sides reported they remained far apart. That's your Washington Roundup. I'm Amber Payton on your home for 24/7. So there you go. It shows uh, pretty decent reception as for a city, and uh, it cleaned up pretty nice. I mean, it's uh, I think it's probably about a 65 or so. As I said, it doesn't have the uh, Connor Red markings on it, so it kind of lets us know it's after you know late 64. Uh, so anyway. I think that'll uh, do it for this this uh, project. Wish you uh, guys have a good uh, next week, and appreciate you stopping by and watching uh, us work together on this. So thanks a lot. See you again next time. Thanks. Bye.